Hello and welcome to Academic, I'm Chris Wood. This is episode five of Let's Elm. In this series, we're making a web app using the Elm programming language. Um, I'd like to just start off today by saying thank you to everybody who has watched my video so far and subscribed. I've got over 50 subscribers and I'm actually I'm really, really pleased about that. I know that in sort of YouTube terms, it's not a huge number of people, but the fact that people have watched my videos and thought, yeah, I'd like to see some more of that, it's really, inspired me to make more videos. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of extra stuff in the channel. I'm going to make a, start a new series called Elm Fundamentals. And really it's going to be, I think, part of a, a bigger series called sort of Functional Fundamentals, where we talk about the fundamental tools of functional programming languages. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. We're going to start off with lots of the basic tools of Elm. Uh, some of the concepts, you know, these things have came up on Reddit when I posted about the videos that I've made. People talking about, well, this concept you've sort of glazed over a bit and maybe it would be good to go into a bit more depth. So I'd really like to do that and that's going to be part of this Elm Fundamentals series which hopefully I'll get the first one or the first few of them out maybe um, either this week or next week. So um, hopefully yeah I'll be able to get, get some of those videos out soon. So today I think we've got quite a good episode. We're going to be making what I think is a really critical part of this character sheet and all character sheets for White Wolf games. We're going to be making these dots. We're going to be making interactive dots that you can highlight and uh, and fill in. I think this is every White Wolf game has these. You, your characters, you, you have X dots in whatever and I think it's a critical part to get looking uh, to get looking, looking authentic in the app. So uh, we're going to do that. It's kind of an interesting one because we'll be going over some sort of uh, functional programming algorithms to be able to get us to do some things that we want. We're going to be using the SVG library, which is one of the more complicated libraries to use. And of course, anybody out there that's wanting to make a game or something like that, SVG is crucial for that, making a game in Elm. Let's start by installing the Elm SVG package. So if you open our integrated terminal, we get a new one up and then it's Elm install Elm package install Elm-lang forward slash SVG. And yes, we want to add it to our, and there we go. So that's all installed. And let's add our imports. Import SVG, and we also need import SVG dot at root. And we're going to put that as SVG like that, just to make it a bit quicker to type. You can rename any of your modules like this. So if you wanted to import uh, dict as Dictionary, no, well, dictionary, um, then you could do, um, although of course it would make everything more robust, so you might not want to do that, but you can do that with anything, including your own modules, incidentally, which can be very handy. Let's start by just making a circle down here. Let's make it up here at the bottom of our view. So we'll just make up a space here and then add a circle in. Excellent. So there we've got a circle appearing on the screen. You can see we've filled it with white um, and we've set the stroke width. Um, so if you're not familiar with SVG tags, in, um, you can have a look on W3Schools. They've got some good tutorials on them. But essentially they look like normal HTML tags. And so that's reflected in um, Elm by having their functions and they take two lists into them, attributes and then nodes or children. And again, you can see here that we've got our like SVG sort of canvas and we specify the size of it. And inside that canvas, we put an SVG circle, which just draws a circle inside it. You give it the center of the circle in the X axis, the Y axis, and then the radius. And then also the stroke color for drawing the circle, the width of that, and then a fill color if you wanted to. So you can see it there. So that's good. That's made our little our, our little circle up here. Uh, we can. Why don't we break this into a function now? Let's just do that very quickly. Excellent. So we have just used our little function. We've broken this into a function, so we can reuse it. And we've made five dots just in a row here. There we go. Excellent. This is what we're this is what we're wanting. 
Um, now we want to be able to say whether they're filled or not, right? To say whether they're, you know, if we have a look on this character sheet here, you can see that they can be either filled or they can be unfilled. So we want to be able to do that with hours. And that's quite straightforward. So now we've given the function a, a boolean argument and this is whether the dot is filled or not and you can see here uh, it just does a little bit of logic if it's filled then we use this attribute which is svg at dot fill black and otherwise if it's not filled then it uses white and you can see here we've defined true for the first two and false for the next three so that's good that's starting to feel a bit like um uh, it's kind of starting to feel or at least look like um, the dots that you'd expect on this character sheets but there's a, we're going to have to do a little bit of refactoring here. So basically, we have currently these increment and decrement uh, buttons here. But we don't need that because what we want to do, right, is be able to click on these buttons and it will set the value for us. So um, we can actually get rid of a lot of this old stuff. But this is, this is quite common in Elm. You refactor, maybe I personally, when I'm developing in Elm, I refactor a lot more frequently than I would in other languages. And that's because the compiler gives you a hell of a lot of safety when you're deleting stuff or moving things around, and it helps you not make stupid mistakes. So you start small, you build a bit up, and you want to put on some complexity, you realize that now you want to change something quite fundamental about the app, you rip that out and you put something new in, and the compiler helps you all along the way. So that's great. That's what we'll do just now. So let me just pause for a second to explain what I've done so far. Uh, I've edited this message now, it's not it's not taking an operation anymore, which we needed for the buttons. Uh, it's now taking a string and an integer. And when you update the attribute, uh, you get the string and the integer. So the, the attribute that you're interested in, the name of the attribute, which might be strength or stamina, etc. And then the value that it currently has, that's one, one to five and it passes into this update ex attribute function. Now you notice that this is much, much simpler. In fact, we probably don't even need a function for this. I'll leave it for the moment, but um, it, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, and now we're just inserting a value into this dictionary and returning the dictionary. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make our, our the dots responsive to actually do things. And we can just, um, we can add events to them same as we can anything else. And um, we're gonna to want to take a couple, oh, we're gonna to want to take a couple of things in here. So now we've updated the point dot, there are little dots here to have a, an event when you click them. And so now it sends an edit ex attribute event and it's the name of the ex attribute and the value that it's going to have. And we'll fill these in, these things in later when we're making the dots. So you can see here, this will flow in here, um, this event, and then it'll update the value inside. So now we need to go down here to where our attributes section is being made. You can see these uh, these no longer work because we've got rid of these messages um, and we're going to add our point dots instead. So we need to find a way to, to make those five dots as a discrete thing and pass in, how, make them have the right messages so that when they're clicked they assign the value to the corresponding uh, value in our attributes dictionary. Okay, so we did a, a bunch of stuff there. First of all, we had a, a little error that you might have noticed. We didn't update our uh, our type signature up here. One thing that we had to do is we had to change this to uppercase M because it's no longer the generic message type. It's our special message type. Uh, and we needed to change the type signature, so that was fine. Now it's doing the on-click. It's editing the attribute as expected. 
Now down here we've had to do a bit of jiggery pokery. We're using a new function here from the list module, uh, list.map2, and that's okay. It, it's 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 like list map except it has a function which takes two values in and you give it two lists. So map has a function that takes one value and one list, and this has got a, a function that takes two values and it takes two lists in. So that's pretty straightforward. And there's map three and four and five, I think, as well. And what we've done here is we've got this little um, we've got this little anonymous function, this little um, lambda function here. This is how you specify it with a backslash like this, and this because it kind of looks a bit like a lambda. And this gets the name from Lambda Calculus. Um, Alfonso Church uh, back in the 1930s invented Lambda Calculus, upon which all functional programming is based. Um, it's, uh, it's, kind of in, it's an interesting topic, but essentially this is how you define this little function here. So it has it's a, a function that takes a reference and a value and then it returns a boolean. Uh, if the reference is uh, greater than or equal to the value, it returns uh, true, otherwise false. So you can see here when, when we do this, we have a list of these five values, are they constant, they're the same thing. So uh, we've got a repeat five of these of the current values. So let's take, for example, Charisma. It has a current value of three. We repeat it, it'll be five copies of the number three. Fine. Now we have, we want to get true or falses from this. We have a list from one to five, and these represent each of the individual dots here. And if we have a value of three, say, when this comes in with the first value, number one, uh, this is the reference value. Remember, it's going to be three because that's the current value. The reference value comes in here is greater than or equal to the value, which is what of the of the actual dot that it represents. So when one comes in here, it'll be greater than or equal to, so it'll be filled in. So that's true. It's going to have is greater than or equal. Reference is greater than or equal to the value here, so it's going to be filled in. Same for two. When it comes in here, it's going to be greater than or, the reference is going to be greater than or equal to it. And for three, same again, greater than or equal to. But when we get to four, four is now higher than three. So this comes back as false. It's not greater than or equal to. And so these are empty inside here. Fine. No problem at all. Now we've got a list of trues and falses. And what we do is we do the same trick again. We take point dot, but we give it the first value. So now it is a function because we've given it this first thing. This is called uh, currying. Um, you take the, oh, actually, sorry, our uh, um, partial application of the function. Um, so we've got the ex attribute, this is the name, and this is going to be fixed because it's coming into this function here. We know what the name of it is, and it'll always be the same. So we can make this in, and now this function, once you've applied this thing, takes two values in. And the first one we're going to give it is a, um, just a reference value, which indicates what value is associated with each of these dots. This is one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and so we've got that here, a, a list from here. And then we want to do, to show the right, whether it's filled or not, we want to give it this filled list, whether it's true or false that is currently filled in. So uh, now we've got these values coming in and we can adjust them. So this is cool. This is, this is looking more like a, an exalted character sheet. And it's a really simple usage of SVG. And hopefully from this episode, you've seen the SVG isn't special in Elm. Uh, it actually behaves like any other sort of HTML um, any HTML function, you can put uh, on-click messages to it. Um, and you can do all sorts of funky things. You can make these reactive, you can make them move around the screen, you can do whatever you like. This is a nice, very simple sort of use case of them. And I suggest just playing around with them and also having a look at, like I said, at W3Schools and seeing how SVG tags work. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Um, the next episode, we're probably going to do a bunch of sort of um, we're going to blitz through some of the things that are similar. We've got an, uh, our ability section up next and some other bits and pieces. We'll get those finished because it's very similar to what we've done here. And we'll move on. We'll also have something, uh, a nice, interesting new thing that we're going to do as well. Once again, thanks very much for watching. Um, subscribe if you found this video useful um, uh, and you want to see more videos like it. Uh, like it if it was good. Dislike it if it was bad. Uh, leave me comments though um, and let me know what I can do to make it better. Also, if you have suggestions for... Uh, any videos that you'd like to see, any explanations you want in more detail, I'm really happy to go into that. Put, que uh, put comments down below if you've got questions. Follow me on Twitter if you want to ask me questions there. I'd really be happy to chat about it. So thanks very much. And also thanks again, everybody that subscribed so far. I'm so, so pleased with my 50 subscribers. And um, I hope that you will continue watching and you find these useful. So thanks very much. Cheerio.